In bioinformatics, we sit at the intersection of biology, computer science, and math. It's a very broad field, so there's a huge diversity of topics to research, but there are three core technical skills that everyone needs to know, regardless of which piece of bioinformatics you are trying to learn. And after that, we need to talk about how to approach your learning, because you can spend a lot of time taking courses in bioinformatics without actually getting any closer to your goals, which might include analyzing your own data. But first, a word of encouragement if you're starting out in bioinformatics. It is a difficult field. We are on the cutting edge, so things are not expected to be easy. And if they're hard for you, that is not your fault. And there are ways to get around that. But just expect that it's not going to be easy. It is going to be hard, but you can do hard things. So the first thing I want to make sure that everyone learns and what I recommend everyone start out with is just learning Python. Python is a great programming language to start with. It's easier to learn than most other languages. Python is also more commonly used in industry. It's used in machine learning a lot. Learning Python does take some effort for sure, but it's a very valuable skill in itself. Even if you don't end up doing bioinformatics, you can use Python in any STEM field. So it is definitely worth the effort. So the second thing I recommend that everybody learn is getting comfortable on the command line. So this is like learning bash, learning to write scripts, learning to run bioinformatics tools on the command line, things like SAM tools, bed tools. I mean, literally almost every tool in bioinformatics is run from the command line. And so getting comfortable with that allows you to run all the tools, string them together, save the outputs in the file system. And I mean, you can't do much in bioinformatics without running other people's tools. You can't code it all from scratch yourself. So you do need the command line. And then you can also run your own Python scripts from the command line. I did make a couple of videos on Bash already. I'll probably make more. So check out my channel and just search for Bash. So the third thing that I recommend everyone should learn is statistics. Now that's a big ask because I have in the past taken entire college level courses in statistics, two of them actually. I do think it's helpful to have that background. I don't expect you to remember everything that you learn in the statistics class, but you do need to know what p-values are. Since you're computational, you might end up running a lot of statistical tests, getting a lot of p-values. And so understanding when you need to do multiple hypothesis test correction is a particular thing that I want to make sure that you have some understanding of. So learn what p-values are, learn all those things, and it doesn't have to take that much time. Spend a bit of time on Khan Academy just getting the basics and look up things like p-hacking and multiple hypothesis test correction, and you'll be good. Now, once you have that foundation of Python as your core programming language, the command line that you need for running everything in bioinformatics, and some statistics to make sure you can trust any results you generate, especially those p-values, now is the time to choose your adventure. But wait, you might notice, we have covered some of the computer science, some of the math, a little bit of that statistics, but what about the biology? We haven't covered any biology skills yet. And the reason for that, I like to focus on technical skills because everybody is at a totally different place when it comes to biology. So some people, uh, some of you are going to be wet lab scientists. You've been doing experiments for years, maybe, or you are at least solidly in some field of biology already. And you just need the technical, practical skills to analyze your own data. So that's one group. Another group might be starting out in bioinformatics, you're still in school, you're still taking courses, and you're going to end up developing algorithms, you're going to do all that uh, stuff, and you still have lots of room to grow and choose an area of biology to focus on. And so for you, it's all about, you know, finding the right lab where you're going to find the area of biology or bioinformatics that you find really exciting. And then the third group is people who don't have the technical skills yet, but they also don't really have a lot of the biology knowledge, or you might not even be in school anymore, so you can't gain that biology knowledge the way our second group could still do that. What can you do? You can learn the technical skills. 
So if you don't focus on a sliver of the biology, you can still get the technical skills, become essentially a software engineer or somewhat of a data scientist. You just might not be going super deep and becoming an expert in the biology itself. So then you can offer those technical skills, get a job as a software engineer at a biotech company. So those are kind of the three different groups. Let me know in the comments which of those groups you identify with. Let me know where you're at with your learning journey and so on. I'm really interested in that because I want to make videos that help all of you um, reach whatever next stage is most important to you. I do want to mention that one mistake I often see people make is thinking, oh, I just need to study bioinformatics, but it's so broad and they might actually have some wet lab research already that they want to do their own analysis on. So they just take a course in bioinformatics, like there's a couple of them on Coursera, and what they end up learning is the intricacies of the Needleman-Wunsch algorithm instead of actually learning to analyze their own data. The reason taking a course like that is unnecessary for most people is the same reason that most people learn to ride a bike, but most people don't become bike mechanics. You need to learn how to use the tool and you can get a lot of benefits from using a tool like a bicycle or a mapper in bioinformatics to learn to use it well, to learn to troubleshoot when things go wrong. But that's very different than learning to be a bike mechanic or actually making bikes from scratch. Totally different skill. You don't need to learn the insides of how to create these algorithms from scratch. The point we're at right now, the frontier has just gone so far in different directions that it's impossible for one person to keep up with very much of it at the same time. So you have to specialize. You probably can't actually learn all of bioinformatics. And so you're going to need to just make some choices and narrow that down for yourself. But that's why I focus on the technical skills, because they're more at the core and you can use them regardless of which direction you go in within the biology. There's also a spectrum of computer science skills, and this goes from spreadsheets to doing analysis in notebooks to scripting to developing tools and finally to developing algorithms. One of my goals with this channel is to get every wet lab biologist up to the notebook analysis level and possibly some of them over to scripting. And I also want to get all the people who are purely dry lab all the way up to developing tools so that they can contribute more at scale and help other bioinformaticians and wet lab biologists to do their own analysis well. Do remember to comment below and tell me where you are in the skill building journey, what types of things you'd like to see more of from this channel. And also just if you found this video helpful, I'd love to know that too. Home Genomics signing off.